Hello and welcome to a new video about electrochromatic electrohydraulic. Last time we talked about uh, how to control things with impulse valves. And we had a pretty nice solution with a button and so on, and we realized that the cylinder is moving in a certain way. I have here our sheet from last time, yeah, what we have analyzed, control with impulse valves. And then we said, ooh, how is that if somebody is going to press this button and BG1 is then also pressed, then both coils of our valve would have a signal. And then, you know, signal overlapping is not a good idea. And I said, next time we're going to have a solution for this. Well, and the solution looks like that. Zit. Pretty much the same logic, however extended by those green parts. Huh? So we have a second limit switch. The second limit switch is usually operated during, if, if it's in, yeah? so in standstill is operated. So <clears throat> let's analyze this. Let's analyze this. At the beginning, we're inside. Huh? Then somebody is pressing S1. All right, S1 is pressed. BG2 is also pressed because we are inside, so K1 is operated. If K1 is operated, then MB1 is operated. This will switch and the cylinder is traveling out. If the cylinder is traveling out, BG2 will be released. And now this is the trick. BG2 will be released. Took This will open. Yeah? So K1 will be off. MB1 will be off. So I can hold the button as long as I want. As long as BG2 is switching, there is no signal overlapping anymore. All right. And if we reach then BG1 here at the end, book K2 is operated, K2 is operated, MB2 is operated, pssst, switch back, go inside. And in worst case, if BG2, well, worst case, I don't know, but in case I do not release the button, BG2 is then operated and we will go immediately out again and pssst, 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 go in and out, but we have no signal overlapping, all right? So it looks exactly the same, but without the issue, see that the, the two different versions, here it is BG2, and this is simply inside, huh? nothing else. And this is how we can prevent signal overlapping. Those limit switches out there, they might look like like this. Yeah? They, they pretty much look like roller lever valves. Yeah? It's a small switch. Yeah? We can select if it's normally closed or normally open. Uh, well, I mean, it can be as small as this. You can mount it somewhere here. And if the if the uh, uh, cylinder is going out, pick. All right, and if you need a more rigid solution, then things like this are available, uh, and you can adjust the, the lever, lever. You can adjust the distance between the, the roll and the switching element, and it switches in both directions, this direction or this direction. So you can adjust it wherever, you, however you want, as BG2 or BG1 does not really matter. All right. So, these are how those things usually look like. Huh? I need to do this. <laughs> uh, what if I want to have here, let's say we need to clamp something and be sure there's a certain pressure, a certain force applied at the end of our of our movement, yeah? then we cannot just return if we are going out, not return, we, we have to be sure that some, some pressure is applied simply. Okay? How to do this? Yeah? We had one element, a pressure switch, yeah? which might help us there, or which will help us there. How such a control, so pressure control, might look like? I'm going to show you the next video. Okay? For this very short presentation, thank you very much for listening.
Goodbye.